this hour, and this music have meant to millions of Americans a welcome visit from two beloved personalities. In fact, through the seasons, Amos and Andy have become more than personalities. They are real people. On this occasion, we present Mr. Lennox R. Law, the president of the National Broadcasting Company, who will bring a special greeting to them. Mr. Law. On the eve of the 10th anniversary of the National Broadcasting Company, it is a pleasure to salute Amos and Andy, who for seven years of that period have played a leading role in making our two networks famous. My early appreciation of this outstanding program is quickened into personal interest through association with Amos and Andy at a century of progress to Cargo, where the Skyride Towers were dedicated to them. As this program now commences its eighth year, the National Broadcasting Company takes pride in recognizing the achievement of Amos and Andy. It is to these pioneers and friends of long standing that we give our congratulations tonight and our appreciation of the many pleasant hours we have spent together. We take you now to Amos and Andy in Hollywood with the hope that this program tonight is only an early milestone on a long road of happy birthdays ahead. Today, Amos and Andy drove their taxi cab up in the mountains to Lake Arrowhead. They decided to explore that section of the country, and after driving for almost an hour, they found themselves lost. By mistake, they turned on a narrow dirt road, and unfortunately, the car stopped out of gasoline. As the scene opens now, we find the boys walking down the road about 100 yards from their taxi cab, headed for a modest farmhouse to use the telephone. Here they are. I didn't know that we was out of gas. We must have a leak in the tank or something. Yeah, where in the world is it? Well, I don't know where we are. We are somewhere up near Lake Arrowhead, up in the mountains. That's all I know. Well, how did we ever get on this road we are on? Well, you were the one that told me to turn down this road. This ain't a mess. I don't know. Here we is, a hundred miles away from Los Angeles, up in the mountains. Done lost our way, and we're out of gasoline. I can see us sleeping in this taxi cab up here now. I'm walking my feet off to get some gas. Well, the thing for us to do is to go to this house down here and ask the man let us use the telephone. And don't forget if somebody brings us some gasoline out here, it's going to cost us plenty of money. Well, if the man would let us use his telephone, we just got to call up the nearest filling station and ask them to send it out and pay them whatever they want to charge us. Unless we want to walk to the nearest place and get it, but that might be miles away from here. Well, here's the house. Yeah, there's the man's mailbox with his name on it. What does that spell? Stay on the mailbox, W-A-L-T-E-R-H-U-S-T-O-N. W-A-L-T-E-R-H-U-S-T-O-N. Yeah. Well, let's get on in there and ask them. Yeah, I guess it's all right if we go up to the front door, ain't it? Yeah, there's a lady over there working in the garden, too. Yeah, well, come on, let's go up there. If he wants us to pay him for using the telephone, let's pay him. Yeah, well... Go ahead, go ahead, knock on the front door. Well, come on with me. Walk up on the porch with me, and don't start talking big enough now when you see him. Well, you do all the talking if you want. <laughs> this thing of running out of gasoline this far from home here is bad. Yeah, well, wait a minute. I hear somebody coming. How do you do? Uh, how you do, sir? Uh, how you do, sir? Uh, Mr., uh, 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 could we use your telephone, please, sir? Well, I'm very sorry, but I don't have a telephone. Oh. Oh, you ain't got none, huh? No, is there anything wrong? Could I be of any assistance to you? Well, we got on this road out there in front of your house, and we run out of gasoline, and we was going forward to the filling station or something. We didn't see no automobiles going by, you see. Uh, we kind of lost, mister. I guess we can walk to the filling station, though, if you tell us which way the nearest one is. Well, the nearest filling station, boys, is quite a long ways. But I, I think I could let you have a little gasoline. Yeah, but so we'll pay you for it. Oh, that's all right. Let's walk out here and go around in the back. Yes, sir. Well, thank you, sir. Yes. Where are you boys from, Los Angeles? Well, we is uh, from New York. But we drove uh, out from New York to Hollywood on our vacation with a trailer, and we left the trailer in Hollywood, and we drove up there to Lake Arrowhead over there, and I don't know, we started messing around up here, and we got lost. And run out of gasoline. Well, that's too bad, boys. Now, let's see. What have we here? <clears throat> ah, here's some gasoline. You boys don't have a can or anything, do you? I know, sir. We ain't got nothing, but we look around and see if we can find something. Yeah. Oh, here's one you can have. Yeah, you can keep this. Well, uh, this show is nice of you, mister. Yeah, sir. We won't pay you for Oh, it. no, that's all right. You forget about that. Sit down there. 
There's a little bench there that I keep out here. And this can of holes, now let's see, about, uh, yeah, about three gallons. I'll fill it up for you. Oh, no, sir, we don't need that much. Uh, that's all right. I've got plenty of gasoline. Now, here's a funnel. The boys are a long way from home. Yes, sir. That, that's a bad feeling, too. How would you like to have a sandwich before you go? Well, uh... uh no, thank you, sir. We just had something to eat while ago. Uh, oh, that's plenty of gasoline there. Ain't no use right. No, no, no. That's all right. I might just as well fill it up. It sure is nice, sir. We didn't want to bother you. We just wanted to use the telephone, and yours was the only house that we could see around here. Well, there's uh, that's three gallons of gasoline you can have. Because I wish you'd let me pay you for this. Oh, no, no, no. That's all right. Maybe someday I'll run out of gasoline in front of your place. <laughs> and... And I'll call on you, and you can pay me back, huh? Yes, sir. Uh, how come you live up here in the mountains by yourself? Well, I'll tell you. <clears throat> Move over there. Yes, sir. I'll sit down with you a minute. Sit down, young fella. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, you live up here alone, huh? How come? Well, no, I don't live alone. I live here with my wife part of the year. She's out there in the garden now. Yes, sir. You see, I'm in a business that, well, it's... It's a sort of a nerve... It's sort of nerve-wracking. When I'm working, it's... It feels like I'm on a merry-go-round. Uh, you work in Los Angeles or Hollywood or someplace yes, like that? Yes, I've worked in Hollywood quite a bit. I've worked in New York quite a bit, too, in Chicago. When I finish my work, well, I... I just have a feeling that I'd like to get away, so I come up here and enjoy this little place. Just the two of you, huh? Yes. You know, I find that if a man will get away from his work part of the time, and just think without the turmoil of worry, going here and there, well, it does you a lot of good. Yeah, that rest do anybody good. That's what I preach all the time. Yes, but you can't rest too much. But after you hit the ball and work night and day, well, it's nice to get away. Yeah, the man got to have some rest already. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. And a lot of them think, though, that they don't need it. But when I work, I work pretty hard. Now, I've seen some of my friends try to keep going, and I've seen them crack, crack under the strain. You know, boys, when I come up here, I find that I can think better. I get something out of life that I didn't know existed. Yes, sir. Yeah, that Hollywood is a busy place, all right. Yes, Hollywood is a busy place. And I guess a lot of people think it's sort of a playground. But a lot of people work awfully hard in Hollywood, and I've seen them, I've seen the work there drive them almost insane. Yeah, that moving picture business is a tough business. Yes, I'm afraid you're right. I guess when a man, or some of them people down there, them actors and all that, in the moving picture business, or when they get on the stage or stuff, they're under a strain then. That is a strain. Well, you know, I don't know that there's any other business that takes up 24 hours of a man's time every day when he's working. But, boys, this little place up here, well, I think every man in his heart would like to come to such a place someday and spend some time. Of course, some people might not like the dead silence of the night or the quietness of the day, but I love it. Yes, sir, I love it. Yes, sir. Well, let's uh, we'll get going now. You say I can have this can? All right, yes. Keep that. Throw it away when you're finished with it. Uh, well, we sure appreciate it. Yes, sir. We need to let us pay you for this. No, one. no, no, no. I've been paid by talking to you. I'm kind of glad you dropped in. Yes, sir. Well, we sure was lucky, all right. And before we go, I want to tell you how much uh, you thank you for giving us the gasoline. It save us a long walk, all right. Sorry, right, boys. Well... Good luck to you. Yeah, good luck to you. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Is we lucky. I see we are. You know, he's one of the nicest fellas I ever met in my life. His face kind of made you feel at home, didn't it? He sure did. Uh -huh. Nice place he got you, too. Yeah, there's the mailbox. What that say on there again? W-A-L-T-E-R-H-U-S-T-O-N. Nice fellow, wasn't he? He sure was. The character of Walter Houston was played by Mr. Walter Houston himself. Amos and Andy would like to extend their sincere appreciation for his kindness in appearing on the program tonight. On this, the first night of Amos and Andy's eighth year on the air for Pepsodent Products, the Pepsodent Company wishes to express its gratitude and appreciation for the loyalty and fine showmanship of these two boys. May we, on behalf of you, the Amos and Nandy audience, salute them with cordial good wishes for their continued success. And now, I know that Mr. Houston would be happy to say a few words to the Amos and Andy listeners at this time. Mr. Houston. Thank you. <clears throat> Friends, first I want to tell you that it has been a great pleasure for me to work with the two boys whom I have listened to for many years. 
Whenever the opportunity presents itself, I invariably listen to Amos and Andy. This is their anniversary, the starting of their eighth year on the network. I have read their biography. Many of you know this. But for the benefit of those who may not be familiar with the facts, here they are. These boys started working the colored dialect in January 1926. Under the name of Sam and Henry, this program, which was similar to Amos and Andrew, was broadcast in the early days of radio over WGN in Chicago. After two years of Sam and Henry, the boys changed their names to Amos and Andy. In other words, Amos and Andy was actually started in March 1928. They broadcast at that time over station WMAQ in Chicago, with additional stations added by means of electrical transcription. But it was seven years ago tonight that they started on what might be called the big time. As you all know, they have established a record in radio broadcasting. They have received today many congratulatory messages from people in every walks of life. They deserve it. Tonight's episode, in which I had the pleasure of participating, was their 2,395th day of broadcast. As you know, the boys broadcast twice each day. I think these boys should be congratulated on their long record of daily broadcasting of these episodes, which carries with it a streak of not only human interest, but a philosophy which I have often enjoyed myself. These humorous, their humorous episodes have been a joy to many people for an awful long time. I congratulate these boys not only upon their ability to impersonate these characters, all of which they do themselves, but for writing this material each day. They are seated by me now, squirming in their chairs, and I'm going to ask them to say just a few words. It's been a pleasure to have had the opportunity of talking to you. I thank you. And here they are, Ames and Andy. Well, that's very nice of you, Mr. Houston, and it's certainly nice of you to say all those sweet things. Yeah, even me, I was blushing. It ain't nobody ever heard me blush on the radio. Well, our program is almost up. We just want to tell our listeners how grateful we are to have passed another milestone in radio broadcasting. We've been grateful to the cooperation we've received here in Hollywood. We want to thank Major Law for his kindness, the Pepsi and Company for their nice message, Mr. Houston for his cordial greeting. And we want to tell you how grateful we are to you listeners who make these anniversaries possible. We want to thank you and tell you we are very, very thrilled tonight to say good night. Good night, folks. has come to you through the National Broadcasting Company.